as we finish up chapter one, we're going to see a few more models that we can use to test one proportion. But I want to emphasize the ways that all of these different tests are really the same. So if we think of the 3S strategy, we start off by calculating a statistic to summarize the sample. So we're dealing with one proportion, so that could be number of successes, proportion of successes, Z, or a new statistic we're going to learn today called the chi-squared. But all of these are the same in the way that they're a statistic that can be used to summarize the sample. The second step is to simulate, and the purpose of this is to figure out what values of that statistic would occur if the null hypothesis were actually true. So this is kind of a what if question, what if the null were true, what values would I expect to get? So in the 3S strategy, it's specifically talking about simulating to see those values. Um, but there is another option, instead of using a simulation, the other option is to use a theory-based model. So the idea there is that you're going to predict the outcomes that a simulation would give you without actually doing the simulation. So if you want to use a theory-based model, you have to make sure that certain validity conditions are met. Um, but if they are, you can skip the step of a simulation and just use theory to calculate the p-value. And then the third step is strength of evidence. Um, so this is basically comparing your statistic to your simulated distribution or your theory-based distribution to ask would the statistic from the real data be likely or unlikely to occur if the null hypothesis were actually true. So we're going to talk about four different tests for one proportion in this module. Two of them you've already seen, the simulation-based test and the one proportion Z test. Um, we'll take some time to practice those since you do have a quiz coming up fairly soon. And two of them are new, the exact binomial test and the chi-square goodness of fit test. These actually aren't included in your textbook, but I think that they're good to know, especially because these are the two tests that we're going to use when we use jump to analyze this type of data. So you'll see full videos about the exact binomial test and the chi-square goodness of fit test, um, but as you go, as you work through all four of these types of tests, I want you to focus on what they have in common. So notice what kind of statistic is being used to summarize the data, and notice how they're modeling the null distribution. And then when we get to the end of this module, um, we'll come back and sort of summarize talking about the differences in these tests. Each one does have its own sort of pros and cons um, in cases where it can be used. So we'll come back and talk about some of those details at the end of the module.